the auth request module in the nginx which provides us a lot of cool features and cool ideas in this video we're going to see how to make use of it so stick with me to find out more What's up guys, Medium Guy here and in this video we're going to see how to make use of the auth request module built in inside the Nginx web server. So using this module we can do a lot of cool stuff like for example authenticating the requests in the gateway level or like for example sending the requests data to a remote server or any other feature that might be needed per use case. So without any delay, let's get down to work. So as you can see in this picture, I've got a total overview of the life cycle of a request that is sent from the client side that is purposed to be reached to a backend server in an infrastructure. So as you can see, the client makes the request it reaches to the API gateway in the first level which is a very common architecture like for example in a microservices architecture and the reason that why would we use an API gateway or web server is a totally different discussion which if you want to learn more I've got a playlist about the Kong API gateway in which I explained a little bit about the options and the reasons that why would we use the API gateway architecture and getting back to our topic in here in the first level the request reaches to the API gateway the API gateway then makes a request to another service passing the data that is received from the client I mean the headers and the body data that the client passed in the request that is sent to the API gateway so the data is passed to the authentication service and in the authentication service there can be any logic implemented again depending on the use case and the requirements of the project and like for example in the authentication service things like authenticating and authorizing the user's access will be checked or things like the user is blocked or is active or not will be also checked so as i said it can be any logic that can be implemented in this service and based on the data that is result of this logic that is implemented over here this authentication service will return the response for the request that is made by the API gateway with an specific HTTP request status like for example it'll return 200 if everything is okay and the request is valid to be forwarded to the backend service or like for example it'll return 403 or 401 if the authentication or authorization is not met so depending on the status code that is return to the request that is made by the API gateway the request will be either returned to the client or it will be passed to the backend service and the response that is coming from the backend service then will be sent back to the client that is made the main request itself so this was a total schematic overview of the thing that we're going to implement in this video using nginx web server as the API gateway over here and the auth request module as the module that will make the request to the authentication service to decide if to send the request to the backend service or send it back to the client and also we'll have a very simple node.js server standing as the authentication service over here that will simply check if the authorization header is sent or not and it'll just respond with an status code so as always i've got an echo server running on a random port which echoes whatever request that it gets and this is actually going to work as our backend service also if you wanted to know how to create an echo server i've got a docker compose file in my github repository which i'll put the link down below so if you want you can simply create one for yourself 
So moving to the codes and configuration, as you can see, I've got a Docker Compose file, an nginx.com file, and a Node Express directory, which holds the index.js file and a package.json file. So in the Docker Compose file, I've got a very basic setup that will just create an Nginx web server and it has only one volume that is mounted inside it which is exactly the nginx.com file that is mapped to the slash etc slash nginx slash nginx.com file inside the container and also in the ports section I've got a port mapped to the exact same port inside the container so this is exactly the port that the nginx server will be listening on so in the nginx.com file I've got two upstream servers one being the app which is the echo server and the other the authentication server that will be running using a node express server so basically I'll I'll be running it on port 3000 and over here I've got a server block that is listening on port 9999 which is exactly the port that I configured in the docker compose file and I've got a location slash which means everything and it is simply a proxy pass to the app as I said which is the echo server and basically if we make a request to this path it will proxy our request to the echo server without any request sent to the authentication server but over here I've got another location which is the slash private and over here I've got the configuration creates another request and sends it to the authentication server and based on its response status code then it'll decide to proxy pass the request to the echo server or not so basically the auth request will be sent to the slash auth which is the next location that I've got over here and it is basically a proxy pass to the authentication server which will create in a moment and then some other configurations that I've got over here which again I'll describe in a moment so next I've got the index.js file and as you can see it is the very basic express server that is listening on port 3000 and it has a get route which will simply do nothing and return a response with a given status code so basically this is exactly the place that we would want to implement our custom logic and also in the package.json file as you can see in the dependencies section I've got only one dependency which is express server so I'll move to the terminal, I'll hit ls, I'll make sure I'm in the exact same location as my docker compose file exists. So if I say docker compose up-d, this will try to create the nginx server. I'll say docker compose ps and as I can see the status for the container that is created is up and it is listening on port 9999. Also, if I say docker compose logs, I'll see that the server is in the ready state. So moving to the overview, so far we've got the API gateway up and running and our backend server, which is the echo server, is also up and running. And right now I'm going to start the Node.js server, which will act as the authentication server. So again, I'll move to the terminal, I'll hit ls. Again, I'll make sure I'm in the exact same location where the index.js file exists simply by saying node index.js the server will start listening on port 3000. So right now all the components of my architecture is up and running and if I go to the localhost on port 9999 I'll try to make a request to the slash as you can see I'm getting the response from it which is the response that is proxied from the upstream server which is the echo server and also if I go to the slash private I'll hit enter and again as you can see the request is coming from the echo server also so the reason is that in the authentication server we're sending the 200 as the stats code so the nginx 
L3 request module will interpret this as a successful request and then we'll try to proxy the request to the upstream server and get its response and send it back to the client. So right now I'm going to change this to 100 to 401. I'll save it, stop the node server and again try to run it again and go to the browser, try to refresh the slash private path and if I hit refresh over here as you can see the Nginx server will return 401 as the response to the client that is making the request. Also if I check over here I'll see that the stats code for the request to the slash private is 401. So the thing that happened over here is that the client made a request, the request received by the Nginx server, the auth request module made a request to the authentication server, the authentication server returned the response with the stats code of 401 and the auth request module interpreted it as a failed request and sent the response back to the client. So basically the request didn't route to the backend service. So that's almost it. There are just some little points that I want to mention at the end. As we saw in the nginx.com file, we've got some headers that is set to the proxy pass. So the thing that I'm going to do in the node server over here, I'll try to console log the request.headers, which will actually log the headers that are received by this node server. And I'll hit control C, node index.js to run it again and right now I'm expecting to see the headers in the logs over here. So in the nginx.com file as you can see I've set the proxy pass request headers with the off value. So basically what this does is it won't let the headers that are passed by the client to be forwarded to the authentication service. So in order to show you guys this I'll open the postman service over here which I'm trying to create the exact same request to the localhost port 9999 with the slash private but as you can see I'm passing a authorization header with a random username and password and if I make the request again I'll get the 401 as the response so if I go to the node server as you can see, I didn't receive the authorization header passed by the client. So if I comment this out or simply turn off to on, so I'll save this, move to the terminal, hit control C and restart the Nginx container. So my new configurations will be applied. So right now, again, I'll go to the postman, make another request and again if I go to the node server as you can see I am now able to catch the headers that are sent from the client. So I've got the authorization header that is a basic random username and password and also the other headers that are set by the postman application. So that's all about the auth request module inside the Nginx web server. By making use of this module, we can do a lot of cool stuff. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, like for example, we can catch the request body and also headers and send it to a log collector server that is listening on network level. So it'll be able to catch all the requests that are sent through the Nginx server and also any other uses that might be needed in any project. So that's all for this video. If you like the content, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. If you have any questions or any recommendations, I'll be checking the comments section down below. Also, don't forget to watch the other videos on my channel where I've got videos related to Nginx web server and many more cool technologies. And again, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that, I hope to see you in the next videos.